Hey everyone, in this video I'll be explaining a transfer case. Now a transfer case is used in four-wheel drive vehicles to send power to both the front and rear tires. Now the reason uh, I'm going to go over a transfer case more specifically is to show how it switches from high to low gear and how it switches from two-wheel drive, just the rear tires, to four-wheel drive, the rear tires and the front tires. Uh, and that's one of the main goals of a transfer case in a part-time four-wheel drive vehicle. So, one thing first, if you haven't watched my video on four-wheel drive, you should do that first. Um, I'll put up an annotation, and also you can look in the description. I'll have a link there. And also in the description, I'm going to put a link of a video of a model of a transfer case that I thought uh, someone did a really good job with, and it might help you visualize it a little better after you listen to how this works here. Um, it's it's kind of difficult to understand if you don't listen to how it works first, so I recommend watching this, getting an understanding of it, and then looking at the model to see how it works. Okay, so transfer case. So we're looking at down on a car here. You've got your engine, your transmission, that feeds to the transfer case. So this is what we're talking about, this component right here, which feeds uh, two drive shafts to the front and rear so that you drive all four tires. All right, so how, how does it basically work? All right, well, you've got power coming from the engine, which is rotating this gear right here. Now, it's also rotating the shaft as it continues down to the rear differential. So that's how the rear tires are powered, right there. It's just a direct connection there um, all the way back. It's not actually a direct connection, but in the purposes of this uh, basic uh, little image right here, that's how it's, we're going to say it works. So as that rotates, the rear is driven. Now there's a chain that goes around this gear and also connects to this gear here. So this gear here is connected to a shaft which feeds to the front tires. That's this right here that you're looking at. So this shaft here correlates with this shaft here. This shaft here correlates with this shaft here. Now, you can also use a uh, direct connection with gears rather than using a chain. A chain is using, used because it's a little bit lighter um, and it will typically last. The problem is with heavy duty applications where you want to transfer large amounts of torque, lot of horsepower, well, then you're going to want to use gears, and it is heavier, but you probably aren't caring about weight in these situations. Uh, and so you won't ever have something like this chain uh, stretch out a little bit, which it can do over time. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using a chain, uh, since that is typically a little more common uh, because it's lighter. So, now this diagram here may look a little bit tricky at first, so I'm going to try and go through it and try and make sure you guys can understand everything that's going on. Remember, we've got two goals. We want to see how does it switch between high gear and low gear. Switch to a low gear for more torque at a lower speed. And how does it switch between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive? So how does it send power to just the rear or power to the rear and the front? Alright, so first we're going to go over the high to low gear part. Now, this can be done with planetary gears, but for this, uh, per, for this demonstration, I'm just going to be showing uh, with standard gears here using like a counter shaft, uh, which is another way of doing it, and it's a little easier to visualize than planetary gears, so that's why I chose to do that. So, I've got this labeled in sections. So here's section 1, which correlates with section 1 here. Now this is looking down on it. Uh, here's section 2, which correlates with section 2 here, and here's section 3, which correlates with section 3 here. So that's how you can look at this and look at this and see how it's... It's a little more complicated than I've drawn here, obviously. Alright, so how does it switch from high to low gear? Well, it's actually a lot like a manual transmission switches uh, between, say, first and second gear or second and third gear. So you've got this collar right here, and so what I'm going to point out is, is which things rotate together. So you've got this shaft coming from the engine. This shaft has got a gear on the end of it, which is rotating with this counter shaft. So everything in red here is rotating together. That's why I've got all these blue arrows pointing, and everything where these blue arrows are pointing rotates together. That's very important. And uh, likewise, I have these green arrows. They all point to things that rotate together, and these red arrows all point to things that rotate together. Okay, so power comes in and goes to this gear right here. Now, this green shaft, as well as this collar, this blue collar that's on the green shaft, also, these rotate together, but they do not rotate with this engine shaft and these gears right here. These gears are on bearings on this shaft, and this uh, 
do, uh, the collar right here is on a spline on the green shaft. So once again, the blue and the green rotate together and then all the red rotates together. So in order for power to be transmitted, you have to somehow connect the red gear to this blue and green shaft. So that's done with this collar right here using a selector arm. So you'll have a little lever up in, in the front console of your car which you can move to high or low. Now that's this lever that you're moving right here. And so this selector arm. So you'll push this collar in one of these gears. So let's say you move it this collar to the right. So when you move this collar to the right, it's going to connect this blue and green shaft with this engine shaft right here. So there'll be a direct connection, meaning you'll have a one-to-one -one gear ratio, and this will be your high range gear ratio. So power will go directly through this entire shaft, and it will all rotate together. Alright, now let's say you want to go into low gear. So you'll move this collar then to the left. You'll pull that back in your, in your console, and it'll move this collar, and so it'll connect this red, sh this red gear here with the collar, which is splined to the green shaft. So then this red and this blue collar will be rotating together. Now notice that this here is not connected to the collar. So the power is going to transfer from this gear, and then it's going to go through a gear reduction. So this, let's say this is three times bigger than this gear. So it's, the, it's going to rotate three times slower, but increase in torque. So the power will come from the engine, pass down to this gear, go across the counter shaft to this gear. These will be one to one, and then it'll pass from this, uh, from this gear to this gear. And then remember, we've got it so the blue collar is pushed together with this red. So those are going to rotate together, so power is going to come across there and then go to the blue collar. And then the collar member is on a spline with the green shaft. So as that red rotates with the blue, it's going to rotate the green shaft, and then you're going to have a gear reduction. So that's going to go, once again, coming from the engine, down through the gear, up to this gear, over to your blue collar, which it's going to be connected at that point, and then it will all rotate out there. So power is going to go like that, and you'll have a gear reduction, meaning you'll be going at a third of the speed, but you'll have a great increase in torque, and so that'll help you get out of scenarios where you need more torque on uh, a slower speed. Just difficult off-roading scenarios. Alright, so we've got the low to high, and that's probably uh, the more complicated part than switching from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. Both basically use the same principle uh, in this diagram that I'm, sho I'm showing here. So, how does it switch between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive? All right. Well, once again, I've got my arrows showing what rotates together. So this blue collar here is on a spline that's not on the green shaft, but it's on this red gear. Okay, so this blue and this red and this blue chain, that's this blue chain here. Uh, and you can see there's the uh, axle going to the front, um, the shaft going to the front differential uh, here. That's the same thing there. And so this blue this blue, this red, and this green shaft here all rotate together, and they rotate separately from this green shaft. Okay, so how do you make them rotate together? Well, just like the high low gear selector, you have a selector here. And so what it does is it connects this uh, collar here, which is on the red gear, and it meshes it with this, uh, this gear right here, which is splined to the green shaft. So once these two connect, the green shaft and this blue uh, collar are rotating together. Well, if they're rotating together, then this red gear is rotating together, which means this chain is rotating. And if this chain is rotating, then this front uh, shaft is rotating, which means you've got power going to both your front and your rear axles. Or And so, all right, so that's a little bit may be complicated to look at. Um, you may need to watch that again. But once again, um, if you do think that kind of makes sense but you just can't quite picture it yet, I've attached a video in the description which I think does a very good job uh, animating this. And so I just wanted to point out how everything works because in the video they don't, they don't say what's rotating together and it's very hard to understand. So 
using the knowledge from what you've got here, you can check out this video if, if you still don't quite get it or you just want to get a better understanding um, and check that out and that should give you a good understanding of how it works. And remember, in modern cars and, and some different uh, types of transaxles, this could be done with planetary gears uh, rather than this like manual setup as I have here, but this is pretty easy to understand as far as how the power is transferred and how it switches between high and low. So I hope that made sense. So here we have the inside of a transfer case. And this first shaft here is going to be going all the way to the back. And then it's going to be connected with a chain to this other shaft over here. And this shaft will be driving the front uh, two tires. So once again, this one here will actually be connected to the rear drive shaft. It's actually been taken off and that will drive those rear tires as it goes to the back differential.